Sometimes the movie you watched a promising trailer for isn't actually what arrives in the cinema a few months later. That's because a studio wants to appeal to the widest possible audience with the marketing, and that occasionally means misinterpreting the tone or content of the movie that they're actually selling. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 movies way darker than originally advertised. Number 10. Kick-Ass 2. Where the 2010 Matthew Vaughn film saw its characters grapple with the real-life consequences of superheroism, its foul-mouthed and bloody action did eventually lead to a conventional happy ending. It was a violent and hilarious romp, but it was one whose gory action never slid into mean-spirited nastiness. This sequel though claimed to offer more of the same, with a punchy trailer that emphasised its comedic elements and intense action yet again. However, while he did focus on these features a little bit, director Jeff Wadlow bungled the potential of another beloved property as this ill-considered sequel was both meaner and less funny than its predecessor. Admittedly, so was the source material it was based on, but while the original veered from the comic in key areas, this sequel felt like a half-step in realising some of its most controversial brutal moments. An attempted rape scene played for laughs, a supposedly romantic kiss between the hero and his 15-year-old friend, that early gruesome bloody death of fan favourite Jim Carrey, yeah it's not surprising that Kick-Ass 2 didn't front load all of this stuff in the trailer. Number 9. The Bridge to Terabithia When the coming-of-age fantasy adventure Bridge to Terabithia was released in cinemas in 2007, the film seemed like just another Harry Potter rip-off, but it wasn't. It was different, and so were the kids coming of age in the film itself. Adapted from author Catherine Patterson's acclaimed novel of the same name, the film followed the adventures of Jesse and Leslie, a pair of bullied kids who find solace from their largely miserable small town existences in the make-believe world of the title. The director's imaginative realisation of the eponymous Terabithia is lush and a joy to look at, and stars Josh Hutchison and Anna-Sophie Robb put into astounding performances as the precocious pair of protagonists. But then the little girl just straight up dies. Yep, after over an hour of sweet kids film fantasy, Bridge to Terabithia lands an unbelievably tragic and brutally realistic ending on unsuspecting audiences. It is undeniably effective filmmaking, and the movie remains a stellar piece of harrowing fantasy drama, but God love the poor parents who brought their little ones to the cinema expecting some light-hearted fantasy fun. Number 8. Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End Released in 2003, Gore Verbinski's Pirates of the Caribbean surprised audiences and critics alike with its success. The movie's light tone balanced swashbuckling action with a genuinely witty script and managed to sneak in some serious scares and compelling romance to boot. The belated sequel, Dead Man's Chest, was less well-loved though, with a convoluted plot and overly ambitious set pieces. But the third film, which was heralded as a return to the light tone of the first, ended up high the biggest tonal departure yet. Later releases in the series may have attempted to redress the imbalance, but the third instalment of the Pirates franchise saw the filmmakers take a far darker and more tragic route than fans anticipated, one of which none of the film's promotional materials actually alluded to. Consequently, by the movie's end, the heroine was left alone and heartbroken as the hero was doomed to a sentence as captain of a cursed vessel, a bleak ending which would have been moving if it weren't, you know, part of the same franchise as Jack Sparrow's antics. Number 7. Chicken Little If you've never seen Chicken Little, you're probably wondering why the hell Chicken Little is on here. Well, released in 2006, the film was a Disney retelling of the classic children's story. The movie also doubled as a star vehicle for Scrubs' Zach Braff, who found himself in high demand after the success of Garden State. It seemed from the trailers to be a pretty typical, sweet and silly piece of fluffy kids entertainment from the reliably light-hearted studio, which only made the film's actual tone all the more of an odd and unexpected surprise. This bizarrely mean-spirited animated film saw Disney try to out cynical DreamWorks and go way too far in the process, resulting in a release too childish for adult viewers and too bleak for the intended audience. Our titular hero is fairly unlikable, but his mistreatment by disbelieving friends and family is nonetheless disproportionate and hard to laugh off, resulting in a finished film where viewers were uncertain who they were intended to actually root for. Hardly a deal breaker for most movies, the lack of a likable hero or clearly good characters did prove damning for a film intended to appeal to a kid audience. Number 6. 
Oz the Great and Powerful. Released in 2013, Spider-Man director Sam Raimi's return to blockbuster filmmaking Oz the Great and Powerful was a light and breezy prequel to The Wizard of Oz. Well, at first. The flick followed James Franco's lovable cheeky wizard as he charmed his way through the magical kingdom and viewers were given a colourful backstory for the denizens of Oz and a string of romantic subplots as our hero attempted to woo all three witches who inhabited the region. So yeah, it was just a charming rom-com love triangle story which definitely won't render this children's film nightmarish later. Definitely not. There's no reason it's on this list. Of course, there is, because then came Mila Kunis' transformative heartbreak as her evil sister reveals Oz's caddish two-timing ways to her. This revelation prompts her change into the Wicked Witch from the original film in a surprisingly scary sequence, and leads to a darker, sadder tonal switch for the rest of the movie. It's one that the film's advertising just never hinted at either. Number 5. Hancock. Released in 2008, Hancock was intended to be a dark comedy that saw Will Smith's titular Superman explore all the comic potential inherent in the premise of a washed up alcoholic superhero. At least that's the story that the film's colourful comical trailers implied that the movie would follow, and consequently audiences were eager to see the stalwart blockbuster star take on an edgier role as a subversive foul-mouthed anti-hero. However, 2008 wasn't 2016, and studios weren't quite ready to back a dark and flippant parody of superhero movies without returning to convention at the very last moment. Yes, okay, so Deadpool also has a happy ending, but unlike Hancock, it stays silly and gory all the way through. Thus came Hancock's heavy, self-serious second act, whose bizarre bombshell twist took things in a totally unexpected direction. The film's tone took a turn as Charlize Theron's character was revealed to be an immortal demigod like Smith's, and what followed was a grimmer than average standard issue superhero movie which which viewers understandably reviled after being promised a daft send-up of the genre instead. Number 4. Casino. Released in 1995, Casino is one of Martin Scorsese's most critically acclaimed efforts. Like the later mob epic The Irishman though, the film is well regarded by reviewers but proved divisive amongst viewers, and both films struggled for reasons tied to their advertising. This follow-up to Goodfellas was a bleaker and more brutal affair than that earlier snappy Henry Hill biopic, but you would never know this from the film's misleading advertising, which portrayed Casino as an even more bombastic and lavish bit of gangster glamour than that earlier effort. I mean, there's a reason people who haven't seen it assume that it's pretty much just Goodfellas 2 in all but name. Thus, viewers expecting to be seduced into the gangster lifestyle by another relatable anti-hero like Henry Hill were instead met with vile characters, horrific violence, and a baseball bat to the face of their expectations. Which, to be fair, is probably exactly what Scorsese wanted. In the case of both The Irishman and Casino, these films were preceded by portrayals of real-life criminals the Wolf of Wall Street and Goodfellas respectively, which left some audience members actually rooting for the bad. So it's no wonder Scorsese felt like he needed to make his intentions overly clear with these follow-ups. Number 3. Click. Released in 2006, Click initially appeared to be another phony, if predictable Adam Sandler vehicle. A silly wish fulfillment plot where our everyman hero comes across a remote control that can pause, fast forward, and rewind time, a slumming it aging Oscar contender who wants to show their comedic chops as a goofy supporting character, yep, it's the standard Sandler arrangement, so surely some shenanigans and antics will ensue. Well, they did, but not many viewers expected the dark existential turn this comedy took in its closing act. After fast forwarding through the boring parts of life, Sandler's protagonist is forced to reckon with the realisation that he has in the process sacrificed the many minor struggles and successes that make up an entire lifetime, and that his powers are in fact a curse which have robbed him of the daily journeys that form the bedrock of each individual's unique humanity. And most of this isn't really hinted at at all in the trailer, there it's mostly just Sandler pausing time to fart in David Hasselhoff's face. It's not Sandler fast forwarding through his character's cancer diagnosis and losing 10 years of his life. Heavy stuff. Number 2. Fantastic Four. Released in 2015, Fantastic Four was a dark superhero movie which didn't come close to living up to its title. This Josh Trank directed flop promised to be a deconstruction of superhero films, according to the director anyway, who was trying to distance his version of the franchise from the campier Fantastic Four viewers were used to. So out goes the quips and in comes some body horror as the movie grapples with the gruesome realities of superpowers. 
But no one was prepared for how hilariously dark, edgy, and uber bleak this interpretation of the team would end up being. The film, for the most part, was a train wreck that wasn't satisfied with simply portraying the physical struggles of the team. Instead, this relentlessly grim film went over the top to give the thing's iconic catchphrase, that being it's clobbering time, a brand new origin. So now, in this film, it's clobbering time is now what the character's abusive brother would announce before subjecting him to a brutal beating. It's a scene that the studio left out of the trailers and understandably really, I mean short of calling this a very Lars von Trier Avengers, there's no way the advertising could have conveyed its laughably misjudged tone. Number 1 the Cable Guy. It may be hard to believe for viewers who had by now well used to seeing the Canadian actor in Dark Affair, but there was a time when the name Jim Carrey meant guaranteed broad comedy at the multiplex. Before the more cerebral and touching likes of The Truman Show and Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, the rubber-faced funny man was best known for the goofy and light-hearted likes of Dumb and Dumber and Ace Ventura. So fans were shocked to see the character actor then best known for The Mask and Ace Ventura make such a dark and underrated fray into black comedy with 1996's The Cable Guy. Directed by fellow comedy legend Ben Stiller, the film followed a deeply disturbed cable installer who became increasingly unhinged as he stalked Matthew Broderick's hapless everyman hero. Despite being advertised as yet another silly romp from the popular comedian, the film's tone was uncompromisingly dark and cringe-inducing, using a style of uncomfortable comedy which wouldn't be popular in the mainstream for another decade. As a result, the movie bombed and was only deservedly recognised as a cult classic decades later.